this state of incredible frenzy goes on for about three minutes. And all the time the elves are saying, don't give way to wonder. Do not abandon yourself to amazement. Pay attention. Pay attention. Look at what we're doing. Look at what we're doing and then do it. Do it. And it, it's this thing where then everything stops and they wait and you feel like a, a torch a spark lit in your belly that begins to move up your esophagus and eventually when it reaches your mouth your mouth just flies open and this language like stuff comes out it, acoustically it's but what you're you're not hearing it the startled friends who sent you to this place are putting up with this what you're experiencing is a visual modality where these tones are surfaces shading colors insets jewels and you are making something you know erase move forward add cerulean put in stippling it's that sort of thing and um, and they go mad with joy when you do this and then uh, you know this goes on for about 30 seconds and then there is like a ripple through the system and you realize these two continua are being pulled apart and often it's very erotic although I'm not sure that's the word but it's something it's almost like sex is the surface of something of which this is the volume and I'm a great fan of sex I don't mean to denigrate it I mean to raise DMT to a very high status uh, but it, it's it's astonishing so this is an experience which in some form I mean it will be different for each one of you but in some form at least what will be similar to my description is how dramatic it will be it will hit you as hard as it hit me if you do it right this to me this experience is of a fundamentally different order than any other experience this side of the yawning grave and why religions have not been built around it why empires have not risen and fallen around the control of its sources why theology has not enshrined it as its central exhibit for the presence of the other in the human world I don't know I can tell the secret as you notice, nothing shuts me up. But a long, long time ago, I took an oath to tell all secrets that came my way. Don't tell me a secret. I won't keep it. I'm against secrets. I'm against hierarchies, lineages, uh, all assumption of special knowledge on the part of anyone in the presence of anyone else is abhorrent to me. I mean, I am a true anarchist, first and foremost. So, uh, but why this is not four-inch headlines on every newspaper on the planet, I cannot understand, because I don't know what news you were waiting for, but this is the news that I was waiting for. Uh, It's an incredible challenge to, to human understanding to try and make sense of this. This has to be taken seriously. In other words, the it's only a hallucination thing. That horseshit is just passe. I mean, reality is only a hallucination for crying out loud. Haven't you heard? Billions of people have gone to the grave without knowing that this is possible this experience that I've just described to you 
And it's perfectly harmless. I mean, I think that if science would uh, back out of politics and do its work, we could establish that DMT is the most harmless, the safest of all hallucinogens. The fact that it occurs naturally in the human brain is the first clue to its, the fact that it's benign. The second clue is the fact that uh, it only lasts 8 to 12 minutes. What that means to a pharmacologist is the body perfectly understands what to do with this compound. You take a hit of DMT and your body says, oh, I recognize this. Uh, activate deanimation cycle, activate demethylation cycle, activate... It knows what to do. And so within 10 minutes, you're down. Uh, a, a drug that you take, and 48 hours later, you're lying around in warm baths and refusing telephone calls, is a drug you shouldn't have taken. Uh, be, because it's hitting you too hard, That's not cl it's not clean, it's not smooth. DMT, the most powerful hallucinogen known to man and science, clears your system in 15 minutes. I mean, you're so down, you, can't, you don't have a small headache or need to take a nap or anything. You're ready to do phone calls. Um, so how can it be then that a compound which each of us carries right here, right in the pineal gland, right in the Ajna Chakra, the Philosopher's Stone is no further away than that. How can this be secret from us? How can we be trapped in a dimension of such limitation and such mundaneness when our own nervous systems and the ecology around us and our own history over the past half million years argues that this is what we were born and bred for? This is where we belong. This is what at play in the fields of the goddess must mean. And somehow history has uh, made us dysfunctional, buried the mystery, made it, uh, uh, if at best, a piece of secret knowledge jealously guarded by somebody. I mean, I don't know. There are lots of mystery cults and secret societies in the world. I don't know if any of them are guarding DMT as a secret. I, I, it may be so. No one told me to keep my mouth shut. If this is not the secret that these lineages are guarding, then they're guarding an empty house. This is the secret.